<gasps> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl Ivy J here doing street walks with Sage. We're cold as hell in New York City, getting the best interview ever. Y'all gotta tune into this. It's really nice to meet you. You too. I'm excited. No. I know. I know. He told me that we've been trying to get to do this in like a minute. So. Yeah. When? So I appreciate. It. Are we? Are we going? Okay. So, just so you know, like this can either be cut out or not or whatever. But just for some background, this is me kind of betting on myself with this show. It's called Street Walks with Sage. I'm Sage, and we're obviously walking on the street. Yeah. The idea behind it is I'm just like super interested in people, and especially someone like you who's on the come up and grinding, and like we can all learn from from you. Yeah. You know? yeah. From whoever you know is working on something that's awesome. Um, and the purpose of me doing it is so that I can kind of become my own business owner. You right. Know? Yeah. Um, so, with that said, I appreciate you being here because you being here helps me make my dreams a reality. Mm, thank you. Yeah, so thank you. So, I have previously ended these interviews with a positive note, something that you live by, something that you're stri striving to live by, but I want to start off with that because okay. I feel like that's a good sort of conversation starter. Yeah. So, is there anything in your life that you're like working to implement or that you already have implemented or that you're just inspired by i just feel like oh my god i'm so sorry we gotta go in this store <laughs> Were you you what you gotta hit this joint up after i, was, I love all that shit. you do okay <laughs> i'm like crazy this was, i saw the karomi the karomi pillow in the, in the, oh, sorry i was <laughs> gonna say we should go in but i also don't know what the policy is with right. filming <laughs> No, that story looks sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I, I think now that after the pandemic and everything, like turning 19, I I feel like I'm really like starting to find myself, which is crazy because I always thought I knew who I was. But even when it came to my music, something always felt like it was missing for me. So I think now I'm just in this mind space where I'm like, I'm going to be 100% me, like authentically. And I wake up every morning and I tell myself that like, Everything happens for a reason and I can't control the past, but I can drive myself to the future that I want. So I think now that's just what I've been working towards. And it's just like, I'm going to do me no matter what. And if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, then they can watch from a distance. You know, it is what it is. That's cool. So where did that come from? I was stuck in the house for like two years in my brain. Like, I just remember like at a certain point, I woke up one day and I'm like, this is fucking insane. Like, why do I feel basically fucking empty? Like, something just went completely wrong. I suffered a lot in the pandemic from a lot of anxiety and like depression and stuff. So yeah, when it hit hard, I crashed for a little bit. And I even had to stop making music for a little bit and stuff because I was just doing so bad and I had to get help, which I'm very big on like therapy and everything. I think everyone, I would look at the camera for this. Everybody needs therapy. I think it's super important that you get your mind straight and do what you got to do because it helped me get out of that dark hole I was in. So. And you weren't in therapy before? No. Had so, you ever done it before? No. Like, I literally, this was like one of my first times ever tapping into it. So I started doing it and it helped me become so much better. Like, I literally was my biggest enemy. Like, and it's insane. So, okay, there's so many levels to this and I want to hear all of them. Um, I guess the the first things would be what was going through your mind what was like what was your, was your anxiety over something or was it just general anxiety general anxiety like I would have my moments where it was kind of like I always felt like I was running out of time and it's crazy because people are like you're 19 like what are you talking about all you have is time but this little voice in my head is like you're running out of time in in what capacity in life or in your career or both like everything like it was like Every second I thought mattered. Like, if I didn't go to the studio one day, I'm like, wow, I'm a fucking loser. Like, you know? If I didn't do this, this. Watch out, watch out. <laughs> Ooh, can't split a hole. <laughs> Bad luck. Yeah. If I wasn't, like. If, doing the most. If I for wasn't your doing career? the most. Yeah, like, I just thought, I just felt like shit all the time. And. But then it also became a battle because it was like I didn't feel good enough to get up and do the things I wanted to. Mm. So it was just kind of like this push and pull. Like, 
like you should be doing this, but it's like, damn, I can't. Like I don't feel good. You and know? then the part that the part of you that didn't want to get up, that was the depression? Yeah, hundred percent. It was so hard for me. Like super hard. Like and then my mom, like my poor mom, she's at home. She doesn't really understand what's going on. She's like trying to talk to me, but you just get into these moments where you're like like I'm trying to explain what's up with me, but then I'm like, man, maybe I don't even fucking know what's wrong. Maybe I'm just sad. Yeah. Yeah. And did it scare you at all to put the title like suffering from depression? No. Did it help? I never, yeah, when I felt like when I started realizing like what the fuck was really going on with me and I owned it, yeah, it was easier for me to just, what's what's the word? It was easier for me to accept it like, and not be ashamed of it because I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of. There, it's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm a huge, even though we're here to talk about you, I mean, I, we, I'm a huge believer in the same thing that even the people, I mean, no one can be forced to do anything they don't want to, but even preventatively, we should, we should go to therapy. A hundred percent. I don't think, and that's the problem. Like a lot of people think you have to go through something to go to therapy. Mm-mm. No, no. You, you just should do it. Like it'll make you, it made me feel so much better. I'm so grateful that I got to experience it, honestly. Yeah. And are, do you still yeah, go to therapy? I, I ended up stopping now because I wanted to kind of, I, I got into this mindset where I was like, I feel so much better. Like things are good and I kind of want to be there for myself more. Like I want to be able to give myself therapy type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but now, and it was also, um, when you, when you have different therapists and shit, my therapist ended up having to, um, like drop me cause she started, I think she moved somewhere else. Okay. So, you know, I was just kind of like, maybe this is a sign from the universe. Like you're good. Like, yeah. you know? Yeah. And sometimes it's just about like proving it to yourself yeah. and like, like, okay, I can do this on my own, but if you never want to do that, it's totally fine to be in therapy yeah. forever. Um, okay, so the anxiety was in gen- it was like generalized, but mm-hmm. also specific to time and your career and because just like there were just, life. There were certain days that I would like wake up early in the morning. I didn't even have time to think about what was going on, and I had anxiety. And I would literally sit in bed like, but what am I stressed over? Mm-hmm. And I couldn't even crack it. Like my heart was just beating outside of my chest, and I couldn't. I didn't understand why. Yeah, and through therapy, did you find out? Oh yeah, we dug deep, childhood, all that. Like, and it's crazy because when you talk about it, it's like you don't realize these things are here until you talk about it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, holy shit! Like, I've been this way my whole life. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, certain questions they'll ask if you have a good therapist. Yes. It'll be like, I'm, I'm like, wow. I feel this. Like that. This came from that <laughs> problem. Literally, it was insane, but no, I'm super grateful that I got to experience it, really, like, I think. Is there, is there anything that you're open, and there's no, by the way, anything I ask, if, you, if it's ever a no, it's fine, on to the next thing. Yeah. But is there anything specifically or just insightful-wise that you can um, give us a little picture into as far as what you found out, like, led to certain stresses? I'm trying to think. I just know, like, when I was young, I did I did grow up with a single parent, my mom. I never had my dad in my life. Mm. Which, my dad is not a bad guy, like, and I don't care to talk about this, like, I love my father, he's the reason I'm here, no matter what, I have respect for my, my parents. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I grew up without a father. That was always something, you know, a little typical daddy issue thing, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, talking about it and like really, like I said, accepting it, yeah, it made me better, so. I was able to like forgive a lot of things that I held a grudge for for no reason. That's cool. Forgiveness is a good thing. A hundred percent. I'm still exploring that one, I think, <laughs> myself. Yeah. But so your dad is alive and all of that, yeah. and she just like wasn't really there. Yeah, no, and it, and it was for reasons I understand. And I've actually, I speak to my father. Like we're cool. Like I love my dad, but you know it sucks about what happened when I was younger. But yeah, I'm actually listening to Logic's book on audiobook book but it's like the audio version yeah he I think it's recent I think he recently came out with it and you might be interested in it I don't know but he talks all about how basically messed up his mom is and how his dad was mostly not in the picture but he doesn't he like understands why certain things were how they were 100 percent, and that's the thing like like I said like I'm getting older now like like when I first got into music I was 16 So it was super hard for me to fully express myself. Like, I had so many different emotions and shit. Like, I'm just like a young kid, but now that I'm getting older, it's like I'm finally mentally getting to a place where I want to. Yeah. 
That's but it's good. a time though. Like sometimes you you think things and then years or not even it could take two weeks for you to become a whole different person. So and it's just like I definitely had a mindset where I completely don't anymore about certain situations and things I went through and yeah, just constantly evolving really. And and the mentality that you have when you look at your past and everything you're describing, do you take that now and apply that same mentality to shit that happens tomorrow that's frustrating like is it do you also are you also able to deal with things that are happening now in a more positive way or are you still navigating that a hundred percent it's so crazy i think this is the most positive i've ever been in my life like that's awesome it's insane i literally tell my mom that she's like no i could feel it like like i just feel like the un like everything happens for a reason time like timing and everything it's so crazy that's really cool. Yeah, I'm in such a better space now. I, like I said, I'm just so grateful. Like, I'm happy. Like, I feel good. Hell yeah. Cheers to Thank you. that. And um, so, okay, you're talking about the universe. Um, so you're a little bit spiritual. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about where you stand in that realm? Like... Just like what, okay, I believe in the universe too, um, but some people believe in gods and right, different right, things. Right, right. So I'm just curious, like, where your beliefs are as it pertains to spirituality and uh, any, yeah, any insight into that? Um, I'm just like, this is gonna sound so fucking crazy, but honestly, I'm kind of just living, like, going with the flow. I definitely have my beliefs. I do believe in a higher power, like, I do believe there's a God. I just don't believe that a lot of the things that we grew up on is just like like 100% true. That's really it. I'm kind of just exploring all that stuff and figuring it out myself. But yeah, so I grew up in a religious home though. Oh, okay. So when you yeah. say that you don't, when you reference the things that you grew up on, mm -hmm. you're basically saying like, not all the things I was taught are necessarily what I believe to be or yeah. is true. Yeah, 100%. Like I just. Some of the stuff, like, yeah, there's lots of disagree. I hate talking about, like, religion and shit because people get pissed off, but I mean. Yeah. It's just, it is what it is. I mean, it's a different time now, and it's just, like, a lot of the stuff just kind of is contradicting itself, and, like, it's weird. Yeah. It's and, weird. And also the reality is we all can believe whatever we want to believe, 100%. and that's the beauty of yeah. this world we live in. And that's in. what I'm saying. I never would judge someone and be like, oh, you're dumb for thinking that. Or that. No, like everybody is free to believe and feel whatever the hell they want to feel. Yeah. And we could all live in harmony like that. That would be a perfect world. I know, and right? <laughs> if people just learn to live in harmony and not get all crazy over stupid stuff. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, uh, I guess, nine years older than you. And I mean, I'm still in my 20s and I'm, I'm exploring all of that. Like right. we, we learn to deal with things as we go and we learn to accept other people's opinions and everything. Right. Um, but sometimes it's like hard to do that. But uh, well, yeah, a lot of people just, I don't know, they can't find it in their heart to just let people live, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, or, or if you feel strongly about one thing, like if we were sitting here and I said, I feel really strongly about we're passing a basketball court. I really hate basketball, but you love basketball. Like, uh -huh. of course, like, Portland yeah, are going to want to argue. Exactly. A friendly debate is cool, though. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, motherfuckers want to <laughs> kill each other over stupid stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. I think... What? I think this is where we shot Love, love Song. I think it was right here. I swear to God. I remember there was a nostalgia? basketball court. Yeah, that's so crazy. That could be the universe, too. That is insane, actually. I swear, this is where we came to shoot that video. This is crazy. That's pretty cool. No, that's a, I love that song. I know, that's crazy. Look, look at us. <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, right as we're like, <laughs> talking about the universe and spirituality, I just think, like, I don't know what that would be to you, or maybe this is too deep, but like, I take little things like that as a sign. Like, look at yeah, your growth. Like look you're, at at the, where, you're at the right place at the right time. Yeah. You know? yeah. This is supposed to happen. And you also mentioned that you think everything happens for a reason. Yes. So what makes you have that belief? So, I mean, I am just a true believer of that whatever you put out is what you get back. So the law of attraction? Yes. <laughs> so if you're super, super negative and you're like, it's just like the, the, how you view things. You know, like, what is it called? Like when you look at a cup, what is it? Half full or half empty? Yeah. You know, and I just rather believe that, like, you know, if something goes wrong, it was for a reason for me to grow and 
and not fuck up later. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Instead of people, you know, they something bad happens to them and they're like, oh my God, this sucks. Like, <laughs> what's God? I'm going to die. <laughs> like, you know, people go crazy and it's just like, no, bro, like take it one day at a time and like I said, whatever you put out is whatever you get back. Yeah. E- either way, whatever the thing is that's happening, it's happening. So might yeah. as well look at it from a more exactly. positive perspective. 100%. Yeah. So let's go back. I know we mentioned your dad briefly but let's talk about your mom any family like if you could give us a little picture paint us a picture of life growing up yeah i would love to hear about oh my god my life growing up literally i grew up in an apartment building like this like super lit like i live with my whole family so imagine like seven eight motherfuckers in a small apartment like how many bedrooms there's literally like i think three maybe wait i'll try to think one two there's four Four, but I remember one in the back was just like literally a closet space. And like, I think my aunt used to sleep in there. So it was me, my mom, my grandma, my two uncles, and my two aunts, and my grandpa. So yeah, there's like eight of us in this damn house. And you were the only kid? I was a, I was a little baby, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was, I was a small one, and then my mom ended up having my brother later. So that's when we moved out. But my whole childhood in there was like, I tell them all the time, I'm like, I would go back and do it again. Really? <laughs> it was so fun, like waking up and just having your family in the house, there was never a boring moment. Like nobody was ever alone. Like, oh, let's just, you wanna watch a movie real quick or something? Like, you know, like, and I was a little kid, but it was just, I loved it. Like I thought it was so fire. Yeah. And no one was like pissed that they're <laughs> on top of each other. Hell I mean, those moments. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, what? The fight for the bathroom? It was one, one bathroom? One bathroom, eight people in this house. Like, <laughs> not even a house, an, an apartment. Yeah. Like, like, we was just in there. Like, <laughs> it was it was fun, though. Like, these are moments that you cherish, though. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, when I go back and think of it, I'm like, but we were so, like, young and having fun. Like, now everybody kind of just, like, drifted off. We all have, like, our own places now and stuff. But it's, like, that's why I told them, like, yo, for Thanksgiving, we should just get an Airbnb and all stay together, like, the old days. That would be cool. <laughs> Because it was so fun, but we argue like a motherfucker. It's crazy. <laughs> How old were you when you moved out of there? I was a little kid. Like, I, so when we had moved out, I think I was like eight, maybe. Okay. But I would still stay over there. I was obsessed. First off, I'm a mama's girl, 100%. Uh huh. But I'm a, also a grandma's baby. Like, I was Aww. grandma's favorite. Like, <laughs> so. I was always with my grandma, so I always stood there, and, like, my mom had left because she had met my, my little brother's father. Okay. So, yeah. And then you guys moved, so, wait, was that in Jersey, by the way? Yeah. That apartment? in Jersey, yeah. Okay, and then you guys moved out and stayed in Jersey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you move to another apartment? Did you move to a house? Did you like your stepdad? Yeah, we, or was it your stepdad? And, ooh, we gotta get into that. Okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> Say no more. But, um, uh, So then you guys didn't move to uh, another spot a house of an apartment or something yeah in Jersey. yeah so they we ended up getting like a, a little uh, like a little little apartment I, I guess it was an apartment but like more like a house scene like it wasn't like a building mm-hmm. so yeah so we we have moved out my mom had my baby brother i love my brother to death his name is devin Shout devin is devin. 15 now okay so we have we have like a super close bond like me and Aww. my brother insane we're like best friends it's crazy that's so cool yeah because he's like I didn't expect him to be cool, like, but I guess the generation now is just like, we, we have like the same humor and everything, it's so funny. Yeah, they be giving people tickets out here like crazy. <laughs> they just want your money. So neat. <laughs> um, and what makes him so cool? I think he's so like grown for his age. Like I said, he's 15. I don't remember being that cool when I was 15. Like, he's super mature and like, yeah, he loves R&B music, which I'm like, hey. <laughs> Does he want to get into music too, or? No, he he definitely <laughs> would not sing or anything, but my brother is super artsy. Like, he loves drawing. He loves, like, taking pictures and stuff like that. He definitely has an eye, like, for shit like that. That's cool. So maybe, I, who knows, maybe he'll be on your team in some capacity yeah, at some I point. Yeah, I told him that. You know, a lot of my Instagram pictures that went viral, or people are like, oh, I love this. My baby brother took the picture. No one would ever know that. <laughs> like, and so... That was probably like even before he was 15. Yeah, yeah. So he was definitely a little younger too. That's so true. I never thought of that. That's really cool. Um, 
So let's talk about the music. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to hear about your start. I know, well, actually, uh, instead of telling you what I know, you tell me about your start when you yeah. first started getting seen and then how you really like decided to dive into the music. So when I was 14, random as hell, 14 years old, or oh, I think I was 13 turning 14. So for my 14th birthday, I told my mom, I'm like, yeah, like I really want a keyboard. And she's like, what? Like, you don't even know how to play keys. I'm like, yeah, but like, I don't know, like, like again, like the universe, like weird. I'm just like, I really want a keyboard, like. So she buys me a keyboard for my birthday. That's the only thing I got for my birthday, just a keyboard. And I go on YouTube and I start teaching myself like how to play. The first like songs I taught myself were, like Happy Birthday and like stupid stuff like that. And Gotta start somewhere. Yeah. So 14, you know, I, I'm like dabbling in and out. So when I turn like. I think like probably like a couple months later, I'm about to be 15, I started posting myself singing. My mom is like, what? I post my first singing video, I was like probably 15. My mom is like, what the hell? Like, when could you sing? Like, you never told me you could sing. She literally never heard you sing? She never knew I could sing. Like, it wasn't a thing. Like, so I have an aunt, like she could sing and she's always told my mom like, yo, Jalen should be a singer. I wanted to be a dancer when I was little. Like, that was my dream. Like, I'm like, I want to do ballet, like stupid. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, so no one knew I could sing. I, I randomly posted this cover of me singing um, this song by um, Daughter, I think it's called. Daughters. I think they're like a band. Super, okay. Super like sad vibe, but. <laughs> and you posted it where? On Instagram. Okay. So I posted, it didn't go viral or nothing, but that was just like the first moment people were like, I remember going to school, they're like, you can sing? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like, you know, something, something light, whatever. So after that, I start posting more and more covers, like just random. So one day I think, what is this, high school maybe? Like I'm 15, yeah, so it's my freshman year of high school, or some shit like that, or sophomore. I don't even remember how that shit went. I feel, that's what, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> You're not old, but I get it. Time, is, time gets worked sometimes. But um, so uh, the artist Danny Lay, I was really vibing with her music. She did a lot of like super R&B shit. And this is when I start like, oh, I love this, I love this vibe, whatever. She posted up on her Instagram. She was like, oh, finish the song, like a challenge or whatever. So I remember I'm home and I like write it. I wrote, I wrote like my verse or whatever. And I didn't record it. I was like, I'm just going to sleep with her. Next day, crazy how the universe works, I'm telling you. My mom is like, oh, come with me to your aunt's house. Like this and that for some reason. I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like going. Like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm going to stay at home alone i record the video i put on this super neon orange sweatshirt it's like bright as fuck like if i was walking on the street you'd see it like <laughs> yeah super you'd bright. never get hit by a car basically no. and then i had these giant hoop earrings on this is like what became like the ivj thing like people like she always has these ginormous hoops on they're like this big <laughs> as big as your face it literally they're huge so i put the i put this little fit on i record the video post it like it's going crazy like when i tell you the most love i've ever gotten i'm like something i'm like holy shit what is going on comments 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 i think danny had reposted it maybe like an hour later so was it going crazy before she reposted it yeah like from my followers like it's just okay. getting so much like and then she reposted because it's a contest so she's posting on her yeah. favorites yeah so she posted up and then we start going crazy with the promo like we're like all right, so I want to win this challenge. So I'm telling everybody, like, yo, repost it, repost it, keep reposting. Tag me. Tag me, all this stuff. So um, I guess with people reposting it, like, all over Patterson, because that's the city I'm from, in Jersey, all over Patterson, people are, like, reposting it. It starts going viral. Like, it's just it's just going. So it, it goes from Patterson to just, like, the whole Everywhere? fucking world. Like, that's so cool. It's so crazy, yeah. So that's, that's kind of how it happened. And once that went viral... I did end up winning the challenge, That's and then awesome. I got all these followers. I just remember waking up and having like fucking twenty k followers and like losing my mind. And, and before that, would you have like a thousand or something? <laughs> something like that, yeah. like yeah. probably like a thousand or two thousand or something so like small. Uh -huh. And I woke up to twenty k, and I'm like crying. I'm like, like this is insane. Like what is happening? All this stuff happened off that challenge, and then um, what really did it with the music stuff like. I met Shy Bugs over here, my manager, and um, 
He's also a producer, super dope. No one, no one sounds like him. He's like the best out here. I see he's like on the piano himself and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's insane. But um, we actually have met before the challenge. I skipped that. We have met before the challenge when I first started posting videos. My my mom, they know him, so they introduced. Like, oh, this is our daughter. So after, how does your mom know him? They're just like friends. Okay. <laughs> so um, she introduced us. Whatever. Boom. Challenge goes. Then we start working. We're like, let's do this. So I post up a Queen Nigel Medicine remix. I like remixed her song, put my own flow. Lyrics. Do you still have that posted? Yes. Okay, I think I've seen that one. Yeah, so that's what really took it to the next level. So the Danny Lay challenge, it did what it did. And I'm insane. It, it did crazy. But then like that video just took the cake. So after that, we posted a version up to SoundCloud. Same day, I think it was like the next day after we posted it, because I posted it at night, that morning after, it's number one on R&B charts, hot and new, and it had like a million fucking plays. And were you so proud of yourself? I couldn't believe it. Like, I really couldn't believe it. Like, this is like the first thing, like, that I, I really was like, like, putting out type shit, like, and people are just loving it, and I couldn't believe it. It's insane. It's so crazy. And at, with that one, did your, is that also what just kept your followers growing? Oh, yeah, yeah. After that, it was crazy. Like, people just, just wanted more and more music, and then that's when we get the, um, the label call. Mm. You know? Labels start emailing me, all this stuff. Who are you? Where'd you come from? Random as shit. And <laughs> it was that when it was, I'm like, 16. a conscious decision to pursue this? Or was or was that decision already made? It's, it was... I 100% knew this is what I wanted to do. I, like, at that point, I'm just like, yeah, there's nothing else I want to do. I sucked at school. I hated school. And, and, and <laughs> I used to be in school like, like yo, like, I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm going to be something else because, I don't know, I was in culinary in school, like, cooking. Like, <laughs> didn't even know. But I hated school, so I always knew I wanted to do something else. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that singing would actually work out for me, but I prayed for it all the time. I'm just like have to be made for this shit. Like, yeah, and then you manifested it. Then I manifested <laughs> it. I really did. I'm telling you, I did. The universe has been I, watching. <laughs> I, I believe it. And then basically the label calls came in and you, I'm guessing there was more than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you ultimately came down to Atlantic just because yep. it was the best situation best for you. Best, best vibes. vibes. It wasn't even that. Like literally, yeah, I, I'd met with a bunch of different, like I had options, but when it came down to like the feel, so genuine, so sweet, felt like a family, like, just just amazing. And I'm, I'm such a vibe person, like, if the mm -hmm. vibe isn't right, then you gotta go. Yeah. Like, that's really, like, has to be positive, has to be, they were just super, super nice with it. So I was like, yeah. oh, like, I like this feel, like. I can even chime in on that and just say that uh, through some of my work, I've had, I've had experience going into different labels and such. Um, and at Atlantic, it's the kind of vibe where I just walk in and it wouldn't be any, and not that a formal meeting's bad in any way, right, right, but right. it would be like, hi guys, hey, walking right. into everyone's <laughs> offices. It was never like super, it's not super serious. Like everyone's there to have a good time. Everyone's like super friendly and like, yeah. I've never went into there and had a bad vibe ever. Yeah, they're cool. Super, super sweet. And uh, also, I meant to mention this before, but kind of interesting how Danny's challenge was a big moment for you as far as like, you know, starting things off. Um, I just see a parallel, also kind of universe stuff, whatever you want to call it, but my first interview I did in my more like post-college life was with Danny. Wow, that's yeah. crazy, that's crazy. I don't know what, like, if there's any meaning to that, <laughs> but, like, I figured I'd just mention it. No, that's lit. No, she's a sweetheart, too. Like, I, I'm just, yeah, once again, I'm just saying this word. That's literally just what I am right now. I'm just grateful. Yeah. Like, I'm so grateful for everything I've been through, so. So, I know that everyone's story is different, and especially becoming an artist, but mm -hmm. from your experience, what would be your advice to other aspiring artists? I would 100% say that despite like what you're feeling like oh no one's gonna like this or I don't even have the platform like you know none of that I think it's about just putting yourself out there because you fucking want to you know and you just you love what you do and if you have a passion there's no reason why no one should be hearing it even if it's three people yeah especially nowadays with like TikTok and shit 
it doesn't even matter. Like, put yourself out there. Don't be scared and just always strive for greatness. Like, yeah, I like that advice. Yeah. And also, one of your original, well, actually, I think all of your original videos that I've seen, what I could tell is that, like, you're really going for it. You're not, like, mm -hmm. trying... I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it didn't seem like you were like trying to do this video like 10 times to get it right. You seemed like you <laughs> had, you know, had the song on in the background or the beat or whatever, and you're just like going in. Yeah. Is that? That's a hundred percent how it is. We were just talking, me and my manager were just talking about that. It was just so funny. Like, I'm really the type of person that I could be like this, like talking, like, and once the camera goes on, I'm just like, let's do this. Like, it's a whole different, like, just going, yeah. going, going. Like, it's just always about having fun, having the right vibe and just doing it. Like, yeah. That's literally how we shoot the videos. Like, <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's just being you. A hundred percent. Like, I like to have fun and I like I like to be in good spirits. This ice yeah. cream. Um, and again, you can say no to this, but I just have to ask: Would you, would you sing something for us? <laughs> I could. Yeah, you could. Sure. Yeah. Okay. What are you gonna say? <laughs> I'm like so excited. <laughs> what are you gonna sing? I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. What is, this is there's so much going on. This is so cool. Um, I'm like so zoned in. I'm like honestly like not even looking around me, but this <laughs> is awesome. This is crazy. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know. Do you have any like, any requests? Any, yeah. <laughs> um, well, Whew. do you have a favorite song of yours to do a little bit of? Yeah, I can sing on tweaking right now. Um, okay. I'm ready whenever you are. <laughs> I know. I'm just trying to win. I'm just like this. Okay. Is the win too much? Is it okay? I'm just waiting. Wait, wait. We I'm can actually. If it goes away, because I don't know what's going on. Do you want to turn? Want to turn around and go? Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Holy! That was like the best possible <laughs> fall. Or that was cat. good. That was yeah, a safe was fall. That was a safe fall. fall. That was shy's fall. Like I don't even know how you just. <laughs> <laughs> you you didn't hurt the camera. Are no, you okay? I'm good. I'm Sorry, good. Man. Man. Because he's tall. Yeah. Wait, how do you just like not smack your face and your camera? Because he's tall. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm like, you know, I just said I'm so in the zone, like looking at you. I didn't even see those. That was the first time. That was the first. Great, that's good. Look, first time. All right. I'm, I was going to say let's sing, but <laughs> why don't you sing? Let's sing. Not me. Alright, <clears throat> this is super New York of me, feeling it, <laughs> the drums. <laughs> Bing bong, okay, sorry, sorry <laughs> Tell me you gon' ride for me, spend some time with me Say you try me, my everything, that's fine with me I ain't never gonna lie to you, so don't you lie to me You grab my heart if you just cheat it properly Yay! That was so good! How good is she? I hope it was good because it's cold! No, that's so good! Thank you for doing that! Of course, thank you. I actually was just saying to my brother yesterday morning, I was like, wouldn't it be nice if our parents gave us the jeans to sing? And he was like, yeah, we didn't get that. But you did. Thank you. No, I know. It's crazy because that's what my mom said. She was like, I don't know how she could sing because I can't sing. But she told me that my dad was always super musical. Like, he loved rapping. So I'm like, oh, okay. Probably comes from that. So you have a relationship with Pink Sweats. Yes. And have worked with him. Mm -hmm. So how did that start? Uh, any insight there? Yeah, so me and Pink met when I was... I know we were in New York at a session. He was a writer at the time. He wasn't even an artist yet. He actually showed me Honesty, like one of his biggest tracks, like before it came out. And I was like, I'm like, this is about to go insane. He showed me like the video. He showed me and my mom. And we were just hyping him up. And then he turned out, he got signed and everything. It was crazy. That's so but cool. But he's, he's the biggest sweetheart. He's always been super humble, super amazing, and super talented. So all good things to say about All him. good things. I literally tell, I tell everyone, every time I do an interview and they ask me about Pink, I'm like, yo, that's like my uncle. Yeah. I would tell I'm like, you my uncle, like. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he's old, and he always gives great invite, advice and like insight. Just like, you know, he's older than me. Everybody looks at me and they're like, ah, she's a baby, yeah. you know? But he's, he's always making sure that I'm straight. So. And um, people like that, I think, set good examples for like you're not always going to be the baby you know right. there's going to be a younger you 100 percent. and you'll probably you know want to emulate him in some capacity yeah. with someone else 100 percent. i heard you say that you were teased for your hair growing up <laughs> so yeah. first of all whoever was teasing you should 
shut the f up <laughs> but uh can you talk about that yeah so when i was growing up you know curly hair wasn't even a vibe like right now people can't see i gotta slick down my hair was looking insane today but <laughs> Curly hair was not the vibe. Nobody was like doing that. So when I would go to school with my hair looking a mess or whatever, people would be like, like what the hell? Like there was literally someone told me I looked like a witch one time. Like I'm like in school crying. Oh wait, he was That's mean. How did you internalize that? Or did you just like let it go? I just so it's crazy because as I got older, it still continued to happen, but like in different ways, like even in high school, like I used to have teachers like try to be like, uh, your hair is a disaster and like make jokes in front of the class and shit. And I would be like, the teachers? Yeah, like, cause I, then in high school is when I really started wearing a fro. When I was younger, I, it was curly, but I used to put hella gel. Like I hated my hair, I hated it. But high school is when I started to embrace it a little bit. But still, like, teachers are assholes, man. Like, they used to try to clown me. I remember I had a student, like, I used to wear my hair in this giant bun. I had so much hair. The, the student was like, um, Jalen, she needs to, like, sit in the back of the class because no one could see the board. I was like, <laughs> I was like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> like, you gonna fail this class anyways. <laughs> I was so mad. But, like, yeah, that's I grew up to love okay. my hair. Like, it's literally me. A lot of people, and it's crazy. I think that's another thing I like to speak on, like, of a, a, a 100% women who grow up with, like, this hair. Like, the curls, the fro. Like, you get bullied for shit like that because people are just lame. But I definitely like to speak out to that audience and be like, yo, embrace your curls, embrace your natural fro. Like, it's 100% the vibe to be different. Like, It is, and your hair is so awesome. Thank you. I used to, I, I, I used to, like in seventh grade, I was asking for a perm. <laughs> so like, I love That's crazy. your hair. See, and it's crazy because they always say like, when you're born with it, you're like, I don't want it. And when you're not born yeah. with it, you're like, I want it. Because my mom said the same thing. My mom was like, girl, my mom has like, wavy hair i get it from my dad my curls oh, okay and she's like she's like i would literally kill for your hair like my hair just falls flat i can't do nothing with it i'm like girl i would kill for your hair like yeah <laughs> i just i love like straight hair too though like i don't know but it took it took a lot to get used to it yeah growing up with it was just wasn't the usual yeah it's beautiful hair thank you you're welcome your name ivy j mm -hmm. how'd you come up with that so Ivy J comes from, I was obsessed with um, Childish Gambino. Mm -mm. He had this, I, I, I believe it was, I think it was the album. If not, then a project, but it was called Because of the Internet. And my favorite track was track number four. It was the Ivy Sweatpants. Okay. It was, it, if you listen to the song, people probably be like, that was your favorite song, because it's <laughs> super, like, tired. I don't know that song. It's super tired, but, um... That was my favorite track, so that's kind of where I got it from. I just took the IV sweatpants and put IV dot J. Okay. So my name is Jalen. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's cool. Yeah, super childish Gambino fan. <laughs> okay. And all right, so you're, you are. I don't even know how to explain like what stage in your career you're at, but you're. I'm the come up. <laughs> yeah, but you also have already Experience. established. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've I know what I want, 100%. Yeah, and you've established yourself to some degree for sure, yeah. but you're you're on the come up, like you said. Um, so I'm curious where you want to be in whatever way you see yourself in one year and maybe five years. So 100%. I can promise that the new stuff I'm about to drop <laughs> is so crazy. Like... Me and Shy, we've been locking in and we just been creating this whole new sound. It's even a, a different IBJ than what people are used to. Like, it's, it's gonna get crazy. That's all I know. But in a year from now, man, we're gonna have hit records. And I just hope in five years from now, tour. I just, I, I, I just see it, everything. I, I have a song called Superstar that I first dropped, literally the line is Ivy and Lights, like that's literally what's about to happen. You don't see Ivy and Lights everywhere. Like it's, it's gonna be crazy. Okay, and I feel like tour will be before five years. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just being humble, you know? You gotta be humble with it. And I'm also, like I said, I'm big on timing. Like I don't even care if it's, it, longer than five years i just know i'm gonna get it yeah <laughs> like that's really and i talk to shy every day about it i'm like 
man, I don't care if I get this shit when I'm fucking damn near 30. It's going to happen regardless. I, there's no way I'm going to leave this planet not getting what I want. Yeah, <laughs> I like that mentality, too. It's yeah. less pressure on yourself because it's going to happen when it's going uh, to happen. A hundred percent. I believe that, but I also feel like I'm going to put the work in to get it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are. When is the new music coming? Right now... I don't, I don't even want to say too much. Like <laughs> You don't have to say anything. Only if you have something to say. But um, right now, yeah. Right now, I've just been working on a lot of, like, single stuff. I don't want to drop a project yet until I really, like I told you in the beginning of the interview, how I just feel like I found myself recently and, like, the sound I want to do and this big picture I have in my head. I don't want to drop the project till it's 100% established, like, put together. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So project we just been working and working and working new ideas everything i thought that was p probably is p oh uh, yeah i'm thinking it was <laughs> and yeah that project's gonna come soon though i think right now though i'm really focused on dropping singles and just keep keeping it going no matter what okay that's cool i like that my nose is running <laughs> i actually was in the bathroom before i was like should i grab toilet paper in case we need it i didn't like, like i didn't have napkins all right well i think we can wrap up is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you want to mention or um, shit, no, I mean, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be doing interviews again and being, like, out. And, no, this is lit. This is one of the best interviews I've ever done, honestly. This was super lit. <laughs> that means so much to me. No, this is so different. Like, this is this is amazing. Thank you so much. I go, This is going to go crazy for you. I, I appreciate it very much. This was so nice to chat with you. Yeah, you too. And I you, love this. You've got so many, you got, like, so much to look forward to. It's only up from here thank for you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Are you like normally in the studio super late? Yeah. That's your style? Yes. Yeah, if super I mean late. I'm not an artist, but I just feel like I couldn't do that. I don't know. Do you <laughs> sleep till like twelve? You literally, yes. Yeah. So like it depends. We'll do early sessions sometimes, but most of the time I'm leaving the studio at, like three, four in the morning, go home, I'll sleep till like twelve or one. Careful. And then um yeah, get up, go to the studio again. <laughs> Damn, good for you. I love the late night. I'm like a vampire. Like, I love that shit. Like, just being up all night. Like, that's really used to that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, like, driving to the studio? Yeah. Okay. Because we're still rolling, I feel like this question is a genuine question coming up. Uh, who do you want to work with? My dream collab. Sheesh. That's such a crazy question because I have no idea. Lauren Hill? Oh, my God. That would be a dream. It's just super unrealistic. <laughs> you never know. Put it out there. Speak it into existence. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> what is he saying? Oh, yeah. That would be crazy. It's crazy. I just listen to so many artists. And I'm just like, I don't know who's my favorite. It sucks. It really sucks. I wish I had a favorite artist. I'm kind of just like in this whole zone, though, you know, where I'm kind of just like, if I got to have a favorite artist, I want it to be myself. <laughs> yeah, well, it should be. <laughs> but you don't have to have a favorite either way, anyway. Yeah, but yeah. definitely, yeah, a dream collab. Uh, if we're saying like all time, all time, unrealistic, realistic, not, definitely Lauren Hill, I'd die for that collab. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> then I, I hit the nail She's one of my biggest inspirations, like growing up and everything, so I love her. All right, cool. That's it. Yay. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank you. I love this. It was super lit.